Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Let's Plant Recap. My name is Chuck and this is the show where I look at your comments from the past week and react to them. As you can tell from my getup, I was filming earlier and I decided to sit down in a random corner of my garage. It's getting dark and it's not like I can do anything else anyway, so I'm recording the recap. To start things off, I'm going to look at the comments from the previous recap, which is from episode 80. There's there's several comments here. First one is from Kathy Gilbreth. Congratulations on almost a year and close to 6,000 subs. It was nice to see the front yard also. Thank you so much, Kathy. There's actually two anniversaries to take note of. I started the channel in around May. Yeah, around May last year, May of 2017. And that's when, that's around where I uploaded my first few videos about propagation. But I haven't been actively doing YouTube at that time. The second anniversary to think about is the September, mid-September or late September. That was about when I started Let's Plant and that was a week or a couple of weeks after my birthday. So, it's coming up. Similar comment from Monolop, almost 6k, yay! A few days after this recap, I finally hit 6k, so thank you so much everyone for your support. And keep watching Seriscapades. From Zanizana66, do a plant giveaway for Aussies and trucks or watering cans like Zach's for overseas people. I guess this was a suggestion for, uh, for the one year celebration giveaway. Well, that's an option, but I'm concerned about the shipping fees. <laughs> they are bulky. But at least, but at least this option is there. From Emerald Star, your videos help. I now know I have a Black Prince instead of Black Knight. Calendars and keychains, please. Never enough keychains for me. Thank you for echoing my suggestion on doing keychains or calendars because that's what I initially thought of. So I think they're not too bulky, they are lightweight, they would be easy to ship around and there would be no restrictions against them. So I might start with this but I'm not sure if I can find an on-demand printer for this. So I'll do a I'll look around. From Julie Seal, I'm liking this video instantly based on the title. <laughs> yeah, this is because Julie reminded me that it's about time to do merch. So, yeah. <laughs> From Miss31 Status, yes to the live streaming. Thank you for taking the time out to share with us. You're welcome, and I'm enjoying the live streams. It's just uh, I'm having a I'm having difficulty finding the schedule. So, tentatively, the next one would be the 1st of September, that's a Saturday. So that's a few Saturdays from now. Yeah, we'll see. The next video is from episode 81. There's quite a lot of comments here, so I'm just going to cherry pick a few. First comments from Gio van de Graaf. Oh goodness, this was such a satisfying video to watch. Thank you so much for sharing. Much love from the Terra Tinkering community. Thank you so much. I, I'm glad you guys are still watching my show because although we're in the same, although one might think that we're in the same niche, uh, Terra Tinkering is another channel which I follow and I support. And they mostly do terrariums, ecospheres, and the like. Our two channels intersect in with regard to the plants. We once collaborated on a feature where they had a succulent plant in in the lid of their ecosphere. So I'll link that here or maybe in the description. And if you're into that sort of thing, then make sure to check out Terra Tinkering. The link would be down below. They have such great content. From the Robin's Nest, how long did it take the single plant to grow those pups? 
Don't worry, I saw your comment, but I forgot to answer your comment right here on YouTube, so I'm going to answer it in this recap. So, from a single plant, uh, I think it took a year or a bit over a year before each of those plants started creating their own offsets. A lot of the pennant Echeveria imbricatas that you see out there used to be offsets from previous specimens. So I guess the safe answer would be a year. Could be faster depending on when you started pulling them out, pulling out the offsets because you have to take into account the growing seasons. But yes, it would take at least a year before they start growing all of those pups. From Isa Zidlauska. Wow Chuck, those Embricata pups are the size of a small country. <laughs> what country are you talking about? I guess everything is relative. Planter looking good. Quite a feat that you made it perfectly level. There's one of the one of the planks is still off balance but it's at the back along the fence so I don't think that I'll be as annoyed by it by the time I fill it up with soil but we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I can get OC sometimes. From Chris H, I would place a screen between the rocks and the soil to prevent erosion. That's a good suggestion. Normally I would do that, but in my case, I have lots of rocks of varying sizes, so I could use them as a screen. What I'm going to do is to lay layer the larger rocks first, and maybe some of the, the medium-sized rocks. I have the white pebbles here. Then finally place my soil. Or I could go with a very gritty mix, you know, just mix soil with lots of scoria, then place the whole thing in. And filling up that planter would be what I'd be doing over the weekend. From Kathy Gilbreth, those imbricatas have got to be the prettiest echeveria I've ever seen. Enjoy the video. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad you like the imbricatas because it's one of the few plants that I take for granted sometimes. They just grow here in my climate and I grow so much of them that sometimes I forgot they have pups. But I still remember my early days as a collector. I would look forward to seeing just even just a tiny pup from my Imbricata because I only had a few of them and I wanted to spread them all over the place. And I grew so impatient waiting for them to propagate I had to find friends or people who were selling excess Imbricata and buy a few. So I started out with maybe a dozen of, dozen, you know, maybe a bit over a dozen imbricata. And from there, I gave them a bit of time. They grew their own pups and they multiplied. From Cal Life, you guys celebrate Christmas in the summer? Sad. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the fate of us in the Southern Hemisphere. Winter, no. Christmas. Christmas in shorts, that's pretty much it. We tend to have barbecues rather than Christmas dinners, I guess. <laughs> From Karen Lothering, holding it like a champagne glass, that's pretty easy to remember. Wow, that's good to learn. Yeah, just do the technique. From Blissful Box, if only I was in Australia, I'd buy all of your succulent babies. Enjoy the video. <laughs> I wish it was less work sending overseas, but unfortunately, due to, due to the restrictions and due to all of the paperwork with the permits and stuff, I don't think I could spare the time for that because I've got a day job and I've got the kids and this is just a hobby. This is something I do during my spare time. I don't think I'll be able to sustain an online business just selling plants because this is just something I do on the side. From Dulces For You, ah, I'm so envious. Do you use fertilizer? What kind of pesticide works for you? Thank you for this awesome episode. I responded to, I responded to her saying I do not use fertilizer, but that's mainly because my growing medium contains lots of soil or compost. When planting in the ground, I have a cheap mix of one is to three or one is to four ratio of pebbles to soil. It's mostly soil, and the pebbles are just. A to add a bit of grit and prevent them from clumping. In pots, that ratio goes down to 1 is to 1 or even 2 is to 1. Two, 2 units of pebbles to 1 unit of soil. And I do that for the more sensitive varieties. And the reason I go with a 
grippier mix in pots is because uh, water does not disperse as well inside confined spaces. In the ground, they have lots of space to disperse. But in pots, especially in sealed pots or plastic pots, they don't spread as much and they only have to go down the drain hole in the bottom. So the grittier the mix, the better. As for fertilizer, the plants can get enough nutrients from the soil mix. In addition to that, I want to keep their stress colors. Giving fertilizer will keep them green. From Betzling Sia, most satisfying seeing you pulling off the babies. I just watched your earlier video on harvesting imbricata. As per your advice, I just planted one, my one and only in the ground yesterday. Hope it will be as big as yours. Thank you very much and thoroughly enjoyed all of your videos. I still remember the first time I planted in the ground. I had a bunch of, well, I had four. Four. Damn fingers. I had four Echeveria elegans and I stuck them in the ground. But I later had to move them elsewhere. Mainly because two of one of them were not doing as well. They were it was getting dehydrated, it was getting sunburned, I guess. Because I planted them uh, late into spring, so it was getting warm, it was close to summer. And that's where I learned that I had to move them into the sun gradually. From Kathy Berry, may I ask if you remove the dead leaves from the Imbricata? Yes. Whenever I get the chance, I do. <laughs> from Julie Seal, I don't know why, but I love this harvesting videos. Plant <laughs> more. I guess I'll have to show more harvesting videos. From Katrina Nazair, I wish I was your Kapit Bahai neighbor. Would definitely help you out on harvesting. That was so great to watch. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I gave 16. Yeah, I gave out I gave 16 Imrecata to two friends. So eight each. Because they wanted to have a few succulents. So yeah. If you were here, I would give you some. From the Dub Rose One. Chuck, I'd be terrified of spiders pulling the pups out. I'd have to wear gloves. Yeah, this is the reason why I do this during the day. For one, it's easier to see the cobwebs, the spider webs. And secondly, the more dangerous spiders, like the red backs, they tend to they tend to make their lair. They tend to make their lair within the within the rocks. And I never see them. Well, I rarely see them under the imbricata and I only see them at night. During the day they tend to go out of sight. So I guess they they hunt at night. So as long as I do it during the day, then I'll be fine. I'm so happy that that last video was so well received. So I guess all of you are in for a treat because right now I'm working on filling up the planter, my propagation planter, which means that my content for the next few weeks, maybe even months, would be mostly about me doing some propagation. Apart from that, I'm working on another project. I mentioned this a while back, the Seriscapedia project. I've already recorded some scenes and I'm just working on some animations. And this one, and this series would be a lot more polished compared to my Let's Plant, so they won't be going out on a regular schedule. However, I'm pretty excited on getting the first episode out. And I'm guessing that if I finish all of the animations this week, then I would be able to release it next week or the week after that. So that's it for the recap. Make sure to watch Let's Plant that comes out every Tuesday morning my time or Monday evening Eastern time. And the recap which you're watching now, which comes out uh, Saturday evening my time or Saturday morning Eastern time. You could also look me up on Instagram, that's at Seriscapades, and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!